Hey everyone, it's Brandy, and you are watching Abstract Crafter. Believe it or not, today's video is going to be a drill with me, and it's going to be on this wedding custom that I got well over a year ago from Hooligan. It's a 60 by 80. Um, yeah, so I got a lot to talk about, a lot to get off my chest, a lot to catch up with you on, explain some stories, some secrets, but not secrets like you may think. If you really want to know, you'll just have to keep on watching, and we'll start that as soon as I roll those intro credits. Hello, friends. Future Brandy here. So, I just wanted to pop in quick before we get started on this video to let you know that I have disabled the like to dislike ratio for this video because the like to dislike ratio is there to help creators know what videos people like and don't like and this video is informative and the content that is about to be played to you is not really out for debate if you like it or not. Um, if the comments get dirty in any sort of way, I will disable them too because that's not what this video is about. It's about to discuss a few events that led to why I kind of shied back from the diamond painting community and it was quite exhaustive so this would be a part one. I don't say it in the video anywhere, but this will be a part one. And then we'll get in, because it's kind of more to do with YouTube and stuff like that. And so then the part two will be getting more into my personal stuff, because I just kind of touched on it. And once you watch the video, it'll make sense. Um, so this is more, I'd say it's personal, but it's more like I said, YouTube related, and so the next row with me will be more, I guess, the things that happened on the other side of the camera, so to speak, on the other side of YouTube. So I just wanted to pop in and let you know that that is why the likes to dislikes have been disabled, and you kind of get a preview. We'll be over here just starting this, and I'm over here on this big canvas <laughs> so daunting. It's just a little piece of the pie. Alright, I hope that you, I won't say enjoy it, but I hope that this video will give you some sense of what kind of started to happen that caused me to take a step back from the diamond painting community and kind of answer maybe some questions people might have had. So, with that, get settled in. It's a long one, my friends, and I chose not to do any editing to the video itself other than adding my little touches to the video itself. So, other than that, I'm not going to be editing out any silences or me m stumbling over my words or there's a few times when the video gets interrupted from I have to pause because my kids need something or what have you. I'm just leaving it real and raw because that's the type of video it is. It's me getting right in there and telling you some things that are not easy for me to tell you. So, settle in, grab something you've been meaning to work on, and settle in for the movie that is this drill with me. Alright, friends. Uh, Spook's gonna see you off as well. Right, handsome? Why, hello, friends. <laughs> it's been a while since we've done one of these. So, um, I guess the best way to really start is that I... <laughs> a little background on this picture. I'm going to also be inserting one in the corner the best that I can. And I know my camera keeps bouncing and I don't know why. So let's hope that you're more of a listener than a watcher. But... This was... My second choice of picture for this, it was one for my wedding. I ordered it from Hooligan, and I kind of did order it around the time when they were having a lot of issues. 
I actually haven't ordered anything from them since to know if their quality has improved, but uh, it's actually been a couple months since I've even done a diamond painting. Um, you may or may not know that I have since moved and I'm in a new home now and I didn't really want to get into doing diamond paintings while I was in the process of moving and I can see a joke here. I don't know, where am I? There I am. I saw dog hair. So I gotta find where the camera is because I'm recording upside down. Um, yes, so I have since moved and I didn't really want to start a diamond painting and have to I've already got like a couple in the process and I didn't want to have to start yet another one, especially one of this size, a 60 by 80 and move that along with all 50 colors of drills and then anything that may have been in trays and it was just one last thing I wanted to have to worry about while I was doing all the moving and stuff. So this video is going to be by the title as you can tell. It's going to be a bit of a different one. It's going to, it's not an easy one for me to make. I'm going to do the best I absolutely can with this video without getting emotional, A. Uh, B, as long as I possibly can go with my voice. I have no idea why my voice is strained. I think it's just from lack of sleep and talking and all that stuff and yeah, I think I just, I really have no explanation as to why I think my voice might be going. So, um, this is a square, 80 by 60, 50 colors, as I said. And from the picture in the corner, you should be able to see that this is, like I said, from my wedding. And I want to try to get any pet hairs out of the way right now. It seems to be a significant amount of dog hairs. I just don't want to take the chance of accidentally moving or transferring them. So this is my new filming area and the tour for that will be coming up. I'm gonna do my best to use a pen, but typically with squares I don't use a pen just because I have a harder time. Some people can just blow right through these type of diamond paintings with a pen. I've n never really been that good. Sometimes I can switch back and forth it depends on the day. Since it's been so long since I've done a diamond painting, I'm not sure how well I'm going to do. I'm also going to be very picky when it comes to garbage on this one because, again, this is a wedding one. But I'm not going to try to, like, mostly, most of the time when I get these ones from, like, Huacan or certain other companies, I will, like, keep each color separately bagged and try to save them in case I run out at the end. And I just go through and use the best of the worst. I'm also not going to be doing that. Uh, I'll just order some if I end up being short since this is something that means a lot to me. I'm also using my hook and tweezers which I don't normally use because they do bend a little bit easier than say Ever Moments or some of the other thicker ones that I've bought. In. But I thought why not. So a little bit of insight as to what this video is going to entail and my head should not get in the way because of the location in which my camera is, which is also why I'm filming upside down because the mic is on the other side then. Then I don't have to lower volume because I'm hoping just to edit this or not have to do much to it to edit. I'm hoping just to kind of do a few little things here, add my logo, put in the picture of the what we're working on, intro, outro, that kind of stuff, and just go. I want this to be kind of raw, kind of, you know, from the heart, not a lot of edits and stuff. Plus, it's really hard to edit a drill with me because of the nature of the diamond painting. You know, you'll see a lot of, like, parts of it'll be more complete all of a sudden <laughs> when you do it that way. I also typically, when I'm doing these types of uh, diamond paintings with the diamonds that have two cuts, 
I'll try to be very picky about making sure I don't put too many 13 cuts next to 9 cuts. I'm just not going to worry about that. It ultimately, nobody notices <laughs> that kind of thing. So, all right. So now that we got the formalities out of the way, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about in this video. So I kind of want to go over what it was that led me to distance myself from the diamond painting community to begin with. Because, I mean, if you are watching this and you haven't, like, kept up with my craft videos and you only watch my diamond painting, well, thank you and welcome back. <laughs> um, you know, you might kind of be wondering what happened, why all of a sudden I disappeared. Maybe you don't care, maybe you just are hoping for some gossip. Maybe, I don't know, insert reason here. But, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I want to talk about some personal things, like when I was in the very beginning mentioned secrets. That was more to do with my personal life and not any, like, YouTube gossip. And I just bumped my head on the phone. Oh my god. I had to watch that. I get into it and then I don't pay no attention. Okay, so, um, and with that comes a few disclaimers as far as when I'm talking about some of the reasons that I left the diamond painting community. Some of it has to do directly with, oh my gosh, I just dropped my dang pen, with the diamond painting community itself, certain people, certain channels, certain companies. I'm not going to be calling anybody out by name. I don't believe that that's fair. It's not a fair way to do things. They can't defend themselves unless it's in the comments. I don't want anyone having to feel like they need to quote unquote two sides. I know you can't really see my air quotes. I'm going to pause for a sec. Not really, but I'll, I'll working on this and get my pen. But also, you know, I don't want when I'm telling you some of these stories about what happened with certain channels, certain people, certain companies. I don't want anybody to go and attack them on my behalf, send them any hate on my behalf, because that's not what I'm about. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not... I don't like to be mean. I'm a very empathetic person, which is probably why a lot of what I'm about to tell you led to where it did. Because I... I feel strongly, I feel deeply, I feel too much sometimes, and I'll be the first to admit that I'm an over-emotional person. I get too invested in certain things too easily. I get my feelings hurt very easily because of the kind of person I am. I will give, give, give until I have nothing left to give, and I will just allow people to take, take, take. <laughs> Again, when I have nothing left for them to take. And it can be very emotionally draining. And that's on top of some of the other things that we'll get into about my personal stuff. About some mental health stuff, some addiction stuff, some um, stuff like that. So, right off the bat, my disclaimers I wrote down. Oops, and I'm shaking you again. I'm so sorry. Um, I did the one about I'm not going to say names of people, channels, or companies themselves as things, as what I'm about to tell you are, these things that only add to my story, they aren't the story themselves. They give you some context, they kind of give you some insight into some of the other things, and I can't tell you my side of it without telling you the stories that I have to that I'm going to be sharing. Um, I'm not blaming anybody. It, th it is what it is, but I feel like in order to move past this, I need to tell this. It, it's been almost a year since a lot of these ha things happened, and it's not to say that I can't let go of things, but I know that's exactly how it's going to come off. I can let go of things, and I have, and that is why I am coming to you with them now, where they're not so raw, and they're not so emotional. 
you may end up knowing what I'm talking about. You may know what companies I'm speaking of, what people and what channels. But I please urge you not to say anything about them in the comments themselves for anybody who may not have been around for that kind of stuff. Um, this is just my side of things. This is my truth, the way I see things, my feelings, the impact of these stories and these events and not so much the events themselves. Um, I think they're an important part of it and what they led to are an important part of it. Um, for all the reasons I stated, and again, no one else is to blame. I'm not placing guilt onto anyone. I'm not trying to say it's their fault because it's not. Um, they, I don't feel like anybody did anything. I mean, maybe they did, but I'm not saying that they did outright. You know, I'm not saying that people did these things to purposely try to hurt me, to take advantage of me, even if that may have been the case. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. If that's what happened, then that is something that they will need to come to terms with on their own if they even care enough to. Like, if it doesn't bother them, then nothing that I have to say is going to matter and they won't even know that I'm speaking about it. So, yes, yeah, some people may know. They may think, oh, I bet she's talking about me. And that's for these people to decide, but I won't call them out. And if I see any comments talking about the direct names or anything, then I'll probably have to delete them. I'll probably put their names and their channel names and the company names into the blocked words for this. So if you mention them, they probably won't pop up anyway. Because, again, that's not what any of this is about. Um, it's about me. And the way that these things made me feel and what in turn happened be as a result of some of these things. So, disclaimers out of the way. Um, and the reason that I feel like I need to tell you these stories is to kind of explain my mindset after the fact. Um... So I'm telling you right now, if you don't like drama, if you feel like this may influence you to feel one way or another about other channels, then this is probably the point where you're going to want to kind of back out and not watch this video, and I apologize in advance for that. But I have, last time I put it out there as, do you want me to dish the dirt, spill the tea, so to speak, and I did have a couple people email me their concerns that they didn't think that, that I should be doing that. So I held back and I didn't talk about it. And in fact, I've recorded this video and trashed it half a dozen times at least. And I just feel like I'm never going to be okay with everything until I just get it out there. You know, telling my husband is one thing. But telling people who it directly also affected, being you guys, my subscribers and my viewers, is a complete different thing. My husband worries that by me going into this that it may trigger something, but I assure you it will not. And that is also why I feel like I need to tell you some things outside of the first few stories that we're going to get into. But now that I have rambled on weirdly about it for, oh, let's see, 14 and a half minutes... Probably longer once I add my little edits in. Why don't we just get into it? So there is three specific events, we'll say, that happened. And it started out, and I may have spoken about these directly at some point in videos, but I won't link those videos or anything. If you know, you know. And this just will help, I guess add to your story of what you already know. Okay, so it started about a year ago, and I uh, was approached with an idea of running this event, we'll say. I was kind of hesitant at first because I knew that it was a long-term thing. It was a lot of work. I had other things that I needed to do. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to focus the right amount of time. I s kind of slept on it a little bit, but I actually never 100% said yes or no. I kind of just started talking and going through details of the event and kind of seeing 
where everybody involved was. And in, and and I never said no, but I guess I never really said yes, but eventually I said, "Oh my gosh, you know, I think this could be fun. I think this would be good." Um announcement videos went out announcing the event and kind of going over things. And the, but behind the scenes, I kind of felt and again, this is my where my side of it comes in. This may not have been their truth or the actual truth or the way things were, but this is the way that I perceived it, and it was the way that um, my my family and friends perceived it. Uh, it felt a lot like things were already super planned out, and that the reason that I was being asked for my involvement is because at the time. No, this is nothing now. I'm a much smaller channel than a lot of the people that started around the same time as me or after me. And, I mean, I'm okay with that for reasons that we'll talk about later. Um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. I tend to do that. If you, if you know me at all, that's me. I tend to get off track and ramble. So, back to what I was saying. So to me, it felt a, an awful lot like I was being asked because the rest of the people involved needed participants. And considering that they were smaller than me at the time, which when you're as small as I was a year ago, I mean, I wasn't like, I'm not that big now, but I'm over double what I was at the time. So at the time... I was the one with the most subscribers. So to me, it felt like the only reason I was being asked was to get my subs involved, to get my subs to kind of go and subscribe to these other channels. And the reason I kind of came to that conclusion and my friends and family that I talked to about this with is because my input wasn't really valued. My suggestions weren't really taken into consideration. Like I said, it was felt like everything was super planned out and I was kind of an afterthought. And they didn't really care what I had to say or, or what my thoughts were. And all of this kind of happened a month before the actual event went out. In the meantime... I asked if I could be of any help. Um, I did a couple tiny little things, but for the most part, I was told that things were taken care of, that so-and-so would do this, so-and-so would do that, and, you know, we just were, all I needed to do really was to kind of wait it out until the event started and then play my part. So the day of the kickoff kind of starts. Um, we all filmed another set of videos going over, well, and this is the other part. We kind of explained what was going on, but there was no really set of rules. There was no explanation of how to enter, you know, what the expectations were. There was a lot of confusion, and I had suggested that we video conference, that I would pay for the calls, that was rejected, so there was a lot in the air, and again, I'm, the only reason I'm stating this is to kind of give you an idea of what was going on. Because it was a very chaotic mess. Um, we ended up creating an event page on Facebook, yet I was told that it was not a Facebook event. Um, I was told that we would be doing videos throughout the time of the event. Kind of like Drill With Me's. But directly for this. Um, we also managed to secure a coupon code with an affiliate link attached to it from the company that sponsored the event. Uh, we were supposed to split the money three ways. When it came to... Now this is the part that some people may think is very petty. It is, in fact. But it's still what was fair. So somehow or another the affiliate link ended up just being attached to one person 
Like it went to the one person's PayPal account. Which made me very nervous when I found that out. Because I'm like, well, how am I supposed to guarantee my payment? You know, I'm recommending a lot of people to use this link. And at the time, we were all, we all had our own separate links. And there was a lot of confusion as to how we would direct people to do that too. Would we only direct people to use the combined link when we were advertising the event? Or would we always advise them to use the link? So there was a lot of confusion and it came to be that when we were specifically talking about the event, when it was videos for the event, we would direct them to use the shared link. Money between strangers and friends is never an easy thing to broach. And this was even more difficult because none of us really knew each other and nobody was really communicating at all. Um, so the time came when our first payment came through. And at the time, which I was not very clear about, so this is where my mistake comes in, is at the time I had a lot of things going on. Hold on. Okay. So I had to make sure um, Talon came down. I had to make sure he didn't need anything. So let me get back. I don't know. I might have to backtrack a second. I was like kind of in the middle of a thought and I stopped. And when I do that, I kind of tend to forget. Um, so I know I was talking about the time when the first payment came to be. Oh, and the fact that I didn't make certain things known that maybe I should have, that maybe would have changed some things. But I didn't want to be pushy. I didn't want to be greedy. I wanted to make sure I was being fair and equal and doing what the majority wanted, if that makes sense. I didn't want to, you know, it wasn't a huge deal. It wasn't like it was tons and tons and tons of money. But it was, a, it would have, for me, honestly, at the time, it would have been enough to make a difference. And so to kind of get into just a small section of a different story to give you some context as to my frame of mind and why I started to feel the way I started to feel. So, and mind you, at this time, everything's going well, as far as I know. Um, we're all talking still as much as we can, even though really we barely communicated in the month prior. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of, like, ironing out the details, which I think really could have made this event a hell of a lot better. Excuse my language, but I think it could have really made everything better. At the time, I had a lot of personal things going on. We were having, I don't say we were, we were having money troubles, but it was medical bills, dental bills for my children, medical bills for my children. I had um, a lot of my own personal health issues and we had to pay a lot of this stuff out of pocket. We ended up actually racking up quite a bit and going into debt quite a bit. And we're still reeling from the medical bills and stuff and all the stuff that we had to go through. I had you know, two kids with major getting braces, which some may argue is a cosmetic and personal choice, but... I guess you have to know that whole story to really know why we th we as a family felt it was important to put two children into braces at once. And we'll save that for a different day because it's just context to add. And so when it came time for the first payment to come around, now there's no telling who, who got people to use a specific link. There's no saying that out of, say, 20 sales, 15 were mine, and 5 or 3 were from somebody else, 2 were from somebody else. There's no way of saying that. And honestly, there was really no way to prove it because it was one simple code with, you know, between three users. The company that sponsored the event didn't really want anything to do with it beyond that. They kind of left it for us to decide. So when that first payment came, though, we mind you, we all had access to look at the account to see the coupon, if coupon codes were being used, if it was the link itself being used, stuff like that, to see where we are bringing sales in. 
and so, you know, right away, obviously, because people are buying diamond paintings from this company for this event. And so, right off the bat, we got a big push in sales. I asked how we were going to work out payments. Is it going to be, you know, are we going to, how are we going to pay since it all went, the payments themselves went to one person's PayPal. Again, in this situation, my suggestions and explanations were not being listened to. They were kind of being flooded out by a flurry of other texts, I guess, in a group chat setting. I wasn't as vocal as I should have been and maybe reiterating what I was saying, but it ended up coming down to the consensus saying, let's wait till the end and divvy it up then. Um, I said, fine. I was a little bummed, but that's what the rest of the people wanted. My God, I'm so sorry if you can hear that. That's my water. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I'm sure you heard that. That's my water. Sometimes if you don't turn it on, if you only turn it on at a certain point, it does that jumping noise. Hold on. Anyhow. Sorry, I just paused instead of making you guys listen to that. Because that was annoying me. I can't imagine what that's going to sound like in playback. But, okay. So, yes, I was a little bummed because I knew that that was going to be the only way I was going to support my channel. Either with diamond paintings or with um, buying supplies. Whatever it was. I knew that that was going to be the only way I was going to be able to do it. On top of that... Um, on top of that, like I said, I had a lot of bills. Christmas was coming. I, I was watching. We were making quite a bit of money on this link, whereas my personal link was not making as much money. And then in the middle of this, another just big thing happened, which added to what the very end goal of this whole story is going to be. So let me, uh, I'll get back to that. I'll backtrack on that part. And this happened about halfway through the whole event. So when we get this news, I realized then that it's even more important. You know, and I'm getting more and more anxious because they've stopped talking to me at this point. Nobody is communicating with me. I'm trying to post as much as I can. I ended up getting really sick for a long time and I believe I was not the only one and I was not I had a bunch of pre-recorded stuff so my channel was able to maintain its natural flow at that point of videos and stuff and I wasn't super worried I had done a ton of pre-recording but I hadn't been able to keep up on videos for the event I was not able to record new new content but in checking Neither did the other channels. And then the other part of it was that most of the activity took place on Facebook, even though I was specifically told in the very beginning that this was not a Facebook event. It was a YouTube event. And a lot of my subscribers were worried about that too, feeling that they would not be able to participate because they either didn't have Facebook or didn't like Facebook or didn't have an account Whatever it was, there was a good majority of my subscribers that felt unable to participate. And in the end, that cost me and it hurt my channel. But we'll get back to the repercussions of this event on my channel specifically. Because that's all I can speak about. Um, but so a lot of the activity was taking place on Facebook. I tried to keep up on there, but I'm not a big Facebook person either. And so a few things, okay, well, let's just finish this part of it and then I'll go backtrack to the few things that happened during this event. So the event ends. I don't hear from anybody for a while as far as how I'm going to announce the winner. Uh, we were all supposed to have a part, let's say, and each channel was supposed to have some winners. Well, then all of a sudden, one of the channels was like, well, I'm going to have two winners. Which makes the rest of the channels, I don't know, like, 
I guess you have to know a little bit about the event. It was each one of us had a category. We are each supposed to pick a winner from our category. And then one of the channels all of a sudden is like, well, now I'm going to do two. Which should have been a good thing, but there was absolutely no heads up. No communication about that. That that was going to happen. There was no like, hey guys, I'm going to do this. If you also want to do it, um, go ahead. But just so you know... And the person that had originally came up with the idea, there was this very big air of, this is my event and you're just along for the for the ride. Maybe not with the other participants, but toward me, the way I felt, that's how it felt. Like, you did your part, you know, you told your subscribers about it, you got them to join the event, you know, you got them to subscribe to our channels, we no longer need you, we've you know, gotten what we needed from you for this event. And all along, that's kind of the feeling I got. And then, like I said, again, I ended up getting really sick. So when I came back, because nobody, bothered, you know, sent me messages or communicated with me along the way, which I also have to take some responsibility because I also didn't either. I didn't, like, send messages all saying, hey, guys, I'm really sick. I'm so sorry. I can't post. You know, I'm just not feeling well. This is what's going on. I could have done that just as well, too. But being the whole point in me kind of getting upset about the fact of all the activity taking place on Facebook when I was told it was not a Facebook event is because when I started feeling better and I went to go start, I wanted to go watch to see what, how many videos had been put out, see what I could do to make up. For my lack of posting videos, I found that there was no videos from any of the other channels for this event. That every single bit of participation, communication was all done on Facebook. And so immediately I felt kind of like super behind, like out of the loop. I had no idea what was going on. And then come to the end of the event... We were all supposed to draw winners from our own category and make our own announcement videos on that. I made, I did end up making an announcement video, but I was not given any of the people from my category. I was not allowed to do my own drawing for the winner. That was all done for me. Um, I wasn't even allowed access to any of the people that were put into my category or the people that I was responsible for getting a prize to. And some of what I need to say, I'm going to have to wait until I get fill you in on the other things that happened at the end. And I'm going to kind of reiterate at this point, the reason I'm going into depth about all of this is because this was the start of a chain reaction of things. This was just the major part of it. A chain reaction of things that led to some pretty serious mental and financial and whatever, what have you, repercussions personally and for my channel. So that's if you're wondering why I've gotten this far and I'm talking about this stuff so in depth. That's why. So to go back up to some things that happened during the event. So the company that was hosting it also had um, an affiliate program, and that's probably going to give you a lot of insight as to who this is. Again, please don't mention it. I am doing my best to try to be as vague as possible, but still be able to tell you the story. But in order to do that, I need to explain this part in more detail. And I did talk about this during the event and let you guys know that they were en they were ending their affiliate program. And I kind of was a little bit relieved because I felt a lot of pressure. Not from them. Like, they never pressured me or anything like that. It was a pressure I put on myself. So I want to make that very clear before I go into this. Um... But I found out first through the grapevine. I found out from another channel who is not at all affiliated with the event that took place or anything like that. Just somebody who I consider a friend in the YouTube sphere. Um, they had told me, 
hey, check your email. You're going to get, you know, the affiliate program is ending. And, um, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to think. So they, they let me know that it was ending and that I should check my email. And that's kind of the basic part of it. The end of that part. So I'm like, oh, geez, I kind of wonder what happened. And for as much as I was relieved, I was incredibly stressed out at this point because I still hadn't received any payment from the event from the person that all the money was being filtered to. I still had not received my fair share for the event. And the reason I still feel like I should have gotten a full third is because I participated just as much, if not more, than some of the other people involved. And that's my opinion on it. Maybe they'll see it a different way. And that's their right to do so. But, so then I kind of start stressing out. Yes, I'm relieved oh, that I don't, that it's ending. I won't have that obligation. It kind of made me not really want to take from other companies because I kind of felt bad. Like, even though many people do it, they work with multiple companies. They don't just work with one, but I felt weirdly obligated. I almost felt like I couldn't be uh, as honest as I wanted to, and I'll tell you exactly why I was proven right about that. Um, I may have tiptoed a little bit. I might not have always been like as negative as I felt I should have been in many instances in where I felt like the quality of the products I was getting was less than it should have been. And so when they ended it, I got this very short, super impersonal email, whereas other people were getting very personal emails. And the thing about that was that two days prior to the announcement of the end of this, I had put out a video with a very negative review. It was probably the most negative I've ever been because we were encouraged from the very beginning to be as honest as we wanted to be. And... Um, and so I thought, you know what, I'm going to be honest. I feel like it's deserved. I wasn't the only one experiencing these issues at the time. People were starting to give other channels a lot of heat for doing reviews on this that was maybe too positive. People felt like we were shoving this company down their throat. And it may have felt like that, but that's not really what it was. They, we, they weren't ever telling us. You need to post more videos. You need to do more videos. You need to push the code more. You need to do this more. It was never like that. Um, in fact, they said in the email that the reason that they ended it, and I actually have it saved on my computer. I don't think I'm going to share it just because I think I'll just give you the quick rundown. So what was told to me is that People were, okay, actually I was told a couple different things, so let's backtrack a little bit more. So, through the grapevine, not through the company, I was told that they were shutting it down because, okay, this company only at the time had five affiliates. One of the five affiliates supposedly was saying really bad things about them in comment sections of other people's videos, and so they were shutting it down because of that. And that's what was told to somebody else and at one point it was more or less told to me because I thought it was my fault because of the negative video I was not upset because the program was ending I was literally in tears hyperventilating to my husband because I thought my video just ruined it for everybody else I was so worried that because I spoke my truth about the diamond painting in that video that I just ruined it for everybody else, the people that worked really hard and were very dedicated to this company, even more so than me. I was very dedicated because I believed in them. And even when I put that negative video out, I still believed in them. I under like I understood, but I was still super pissed because they were trying to push out, you know, they had all this new stuff coming in, but their warehouse was still, at the time, flooded with old stuff. So they started sending out 
terrible quality diamond paintings, not their normal quality. Like stuff that you could get for a fraction of the price on AliExpress and actually get better. Oop, I just bumped. For the same price, more or less. Um, we'll just leave it at that. So they were trying to get rid of a lot of their low quality stuff, which was coming in missing colors, missing parts, not having enough colors, not having enough of specific drills, lacking them all together. Uh, the canvases themselves would be very fuzzy and not clear. There wouldn't be the definition that this company was coming to be known for. And it was something that myself and many others bragged up a lot is about the specific quality. And I felt in that, because they said I could be honest, I felt I had every right to give them the honest review that I was told I could do. And then two days later, the whole program was shut down. I, had, I Of course I felt like it was my fault. But I was reassured, again, that it wasn't me. And I was told by name whose fault it was that it was them going on these two specific videos and talking badly about them. And I actually went and watched the videos and read the comments and I didn't think that they were bad. I did not think it was bashing in any way. They were agreeing with the person who had gotten terrible quality and saying how they would be upset too. That was literally what the comments were. And then at the same time, other people were being told it's because my video went out. And then some of my subscribers were concerned and wrote into this company and asked why they were ending the affiliate program because they enjoyed using my code. And yes, it was me specifically. Other people's subscribers may have done the same thing, but my subscribers were told in so many words that the reason they shut it down was because we were giving too positive of reviews and we weren't being honest enough in our videos. I was just done at that point. I had an order in the works and I even mentioned in that video of the last time I unboxed for them that that would be my last order. I have stuck to that. And the thing that makes me angry to this day about that, and I do get emotional because at the time I needed that money more than I'd like to admit, really. But what really makes me angry is to this day, they continue to work with influencers like crazy. I see coupon codes and all kinds of people's description boxes. The thing that makes me the most angry is not that they're working with influencers or other channels. It's that they lied and they couldn't be honest about any of it. They lied to me. They lied to other people that asked. They lied to my subscribers when they asked. And all along, they could have just said, we don't want to work with you anymore because of the way that you do our the reviews. And yeah, that would have hurt. It would have stung like hell. But at least it would have been honest and I could have respected them for it. And so then this happened in the middle of this event and then we were told that that coupon code would still be good until the end of our event, but that our personal ones would shut down. And I tell you, I've tried some of the other people's personal codes and to this day they still work. So it was only certain people that lost their privileges. Again, they couldn't be honest. And then the other thing that kind of made me mad about this company is that they would never contact me directly. They would on certain occasions, but it wasn't near to the extent that they would talk to other people. In fact, at the end of the affiliate program, when they started getting new content in, they wrote to somebody else that I happen to be friends with and said, let Brandy know we're sending her a painting because we think she'd really like it. They couldn't even write to me. And at the same time, I was supposed to be doing a project f for them. I'm supposed to be doing kind of what I'm doing now, but in a speed version. I sent over an email to the lady that I had mostly been in contact with. Not the lady that I actually set it up with, I guess. I should have done that. And I was going to. I was actually going to send an email to both. But it was a progress video on this particular diamond painting. And I wanted them to let me know if that was the quality that they were looking for. Because we had set up specific stipulations and this painting ended up being way bigger like the one that they sent me to use it was supposed to be used in a promotional for their Facebook and the painting they sent me was 
so big. It was like a 75 by 90. That, and I would not have been able to do it in the format that they wanted, so I had to try some other formats. And so I sent those along in an email, only to get the email bounced back to me saying I had been blocked. So that's a really crappy way to find out that they were in fact mad about my video and just couldn't tell me to either A, take it down, or B, put some disclaimers in, or C, just be honest with me and say that due to my video, they had to take me from the affiliate program and just left everybody else in it. Or if they were really indeed mad at this other channel for commenting in somebody else's comments, you know, remove the people that you feel are not giving you the look you want. But then the people who were giving them super negative reviews, they started sending them products like crazy to try to win them over instead of sticking with the people that already had their back. And that was, like I said, that was the only time I gave a, oh no, bad review. And I did get a lot of flack for it, but I took it in stride because it was still my opinion. Anyway, I sound like I'm getting a little heated about it it's because I, I do get heated because it, to me, for a company, it was very unprofessional the way that I was treated as another professional in, you know, as a YouTuber, doing reviews, working with a company, the way I, I felt that I was treated was less than fair. And they couldn't just be honest with me. And yes, I could have done more, but I guess I felt so burned by all the series of events that... I just, I guess it was like my, I took that opportunity to just wash my hands of the whole company and the whole situation. And it makes me feel really jaded to this day. I won't order from them, though I love their stuff. And I won't even work on their products because of how I felt. Because I felt like I should get an apology or an explanation. I felt like I should have got the same explanation that the person that told me about it got. And when they decided to send me new products, they could have told me I was so mad. I didn't even send them a thank you. And that is so not my personality. And it is wrong. And you can tell me I was wrong for that. But at the at that point, enough was enough for me. I had hit my boiling point. I had I hit my breaking point. And I felt like they had, it was so unprofessional. They got too personal with us. And they treated it very personally. And it all just kind of played out very poorly. And so now we're going to backtrack a little bit more. And we're going to get to the point where at the end of this um, event, I told you that I wasn't even allowed to draw my own winner. I was never allowed to look at the people that entered my category. I was never sent my payment from the person that held the money. Pretty sure they split it with just the other people and just left me out, which you have no idea how much that hurts. And even just saying that out loud gets me a little choked up because I felt like it was the ultimate diss to people that I had been very kind to and very helpful to and that I have no idea what I did wrong, I guess. That I thought we were friends and that's why you just don't mix friendship with YouTube. Not to say I haven't made some great friends from YouTube. But it's not easy for me now. And I feel like everybody has an ulterior motive. With the exception of certain people. And you know who you are. You don't even have to think that you're included in this. And that's all I'm going to say on that. But it's hard for me to be trusting of people. That they don't have ulterior motives. Because I got... It was... You know, I'm probably not even getting everything that I wanted to say because it has been a year. Well, close to a year. And so I'm probably missing a lot of things that I really want to add to the story that I guess just aren't as important anymore. But I never got payment. At the end of it, I was still expected to send my the winner of my category to the person that kind of blocked me and crapped all over me and even more proof that she blocked me as I sent email from a different I think from my abstract crafter which was not blocked I it was either that one or my personal email whichever one it was that wasn't blocked um 
I sent the email to and that email was just forwarded to somebody that I've never worked with and never talked to and I never even so much just got a response about any of it like when my winner didn't respond right away because again it was done on Facebook and I did make an announcement video but people had at that point had come to expect an announcement on Facebook um um Sorry, brain fart. Uh, yeah, uh, they didn't, they wouldn't respond to me. They, they forwarded me to somebody that I don't even believe deals with the things that they deal with. It was, I think it was like an assistant or something weird like that. And at that point, I know for a fact that other people in the community were having personal conversations and dealings with the person that had blocked me and then obviously refused to work with me. Which, yes, it is hurtful because I don't even know what I did to them to upset them. And if it's all over one video, that's even more, like, WTF worthy, I guess. Um, but then another thing that happened during a lot of this is that one of the other channels involved started making hate videos about me and other channels they wouldn't say, kind of like I'm doing here, they wouldn't say names, but they would say just enough where you knew who they were talking about. Like, for example, I had coined the term post reviews. There was never such a thing as a post review in our community. And they, like, out and out refused to use it. I think even calling it, me, I'm, I'm probably wrong, calling it silly or calling it something... Either way, whatever it was that they said, it was more or less a dig at me, and I could tell, among other things. And then also take, at the same time, kind of taking pot shots at somebody else, another creator that I hold very near and dear to my heart, who has been a very good friend to me on YouTube and outside of YouTube. And in fact, it was the person that inspired me to start my channel. So, and it was just like comments where like I said it was it was so childish it was like they wouldn't talk about me but they were you know they were definitely talking about me they just wouldn't say my name or my channel name which is I guess smart because then you can just play it off as hypothetical and then if I were to ever be confrontational they could have just been like I wasn't talking about you or you know they could have played it off like another channel even though you, you just know there are certain things you just know and, and so all of this came to a head and I know that's why they just said, don't pay her. Let's not give her the money. We did all the work. It was your idea, blah, blah, blah. You know, she didn't help, even though I have proof and receipts that I did help. I did try to ask what I could do. I tried my best. And when I got sick, though, I didn't say anything at the time I got sick. When I felt better, I apologized profusely. And then I was on top of me noticing that no one else had actually posted videos, that they had only done things in the actual event page on Facebook. Um, I still felt bad, you know, that I was didn't do more, even though nobody else had been doing anything either. And I'm just, I know that I got off track for a second and I switched gears and I've probably done that a multitude of times throughout this story. And it may be really confusing and it may be, you know, all over the place. And I try to tell it the best I can. So, all... It really honestly it comes down to... I'm too nice for my own good. I allowed some other channels to take advantage of me, walk all over me, use me, and then not even give me what I was owed. And I know that we made a significant amount of money, enough that would have helped me a lot at the time with a lot of things, even though it would have been after Christmas. It could have helped me recoup a lot of things, a lot of losses, you know, money loss from medical and dental things. 
along the way and things that I had to sacrifice because of Christmas, you know, to make sure my kids still had a good Christmas and stuff like that, which again is a personal choice I made. But knowing, me knowing how much that would have helped me, I should have spoke up, yes. But as we're going to get into of why I told you this long story for the last hour, um, and what kind of all of that situation, how it took a toll on me, all of these events combined in a very short space of time, like four months, maybe five months, you know, what kind of this all did to me and my psyche when I was already in a fragile state. That's where I'm going to pick up on next, but I am going to take a short break. I'm going to go check on my kids. I'm going to go get something to drink because my throat is dry. And then I'm going to talk about some personal things. And then you, you, I'll, as I go into these personal things, I will tell you why all the things that we just talked about affected me in the way that they did. I mean, I kind of gave you an overview of that in the very beginning. Um, in telling you some of the things that I said in the very beginning. So hopefully you remember those things. <laughs> um, and I also want to say before I take this quick break, which you won't even notice. It'll be a commercial break for you most likely. Is that, um, I don't know. Actually, I forgot. See, that's how quickly it can happen when I'm on a roll. Um, you know, I just, I, I, I hope that a lot of this is making sense and you can kind of understand um, if you are not the way that I am and thinking the way that I think. Don't take this opportunity to completely tell me I'm overreacting because I already feel that way. You don't have to take this opportunity to go down into the comments and say, oh, that's, I think that's where I was getting at is, yes, there's more I could have done. I could have been more... I could have stood up for myself more. I could have been more like, where is the money that I am owed, that you owe me, that we all earned? You know, where is my cut? I should have. I could have. And when I get into this next part of it, hopefully you will understand why I just couldn't and didn't. So, quick commercial break, possibly. But either way, it's going to be like a five-minute break for me. So, I will be right back. All right, I am back from break. Camera's probably shaking. Town's admiring a fly that got stuck to a little fly paper thingy. <laughs> so, let's see. We're going to pick up on the other things that were going on in life as to why this had probably a bigger in all of the stuff that we talked about in the first hour. Why that may... I've had a bigger impact than it probably should have. So, at the same time, okay, I guess a little context is the way that I record, and I'm sorry, sorry, my camera is trying to catch up since I have hit record again. It may have been bouncing the entire time. I've really only been looking up momentarily to make sure that I'm still in focus. And... Every time I've looked, it hasn't been shaking, so... Okay. So, all along, all this stuff is going on, and then we're going to get into the personal stuff that I promised you, and then I do have a bit of happiness at the end of all of this crazy, chaotic... We'll call it madness. That was my life for practically the last, we'll say, nine months, because it hasn't been fully a year since I felt like... A lot of, like, my channel took a hit and my life kind of got more chaotic than I'd like it to have been. So, my brother is an, a really good guy. He's, you know, very thoughtful of other people, very giving, very caring. Same as me, almost to a fault. And he, one weekend came to stay with us because his roommate had kids and was having a birthday party and he wanted to give them space and not kind of be intruding 
or being in the way or what have you. I don't remember the exact details of this story. So he comes to stay and he just kept staying and he kind of never left. So he like unofficially moved in. Now at this time, I'm living with myself. It's myself. It's my husband, Adam, and my three kids, Haley, Talon, and Gavin. Gavin also has a roommate living with him who left their home due to, it was a bad living situation for him, so we took him in. So, at this point, then now my mom is also, we had been living together for many, many years at this point. She was kind of helping me raise my kids and stuff like that. I mean, it was just a different family dynamic is the best way to say it. You know, living with my mom and stuff. It's not most people's typical living situation, I guess. <laughs> but so before my brother comes to stay, there's me, and my mom, or me, and my sorry, my me and my husband, my three kids. Gavin's best friend, and my mom. So there's seven of us. And then my brother comes to stay. Now, the way the house was situated, it was already not good. My living room had become, had been taken over as like a crafting area, workspace, living room, bedroom. It, it just was an all around like multi-purpose room. And then my mom, like, the where the dining room was was kind of a split room. I never really understood the layout of this house and why it was that way. And it's actually a pretty typical layout for a lot of houses in this town, oddly enough, where it's the living room with a small hallway next to it and then the stairs next to that. And then you go through this short, small hallway into... A dining room which also has another similar size room attached to it as an other dining room I've kind of explained this in another video um and at this point I had my bedroom upstairs it was a four bedroom house so I had my bedroom upstairs and each one of my children had a room and my oldest son was already sharing his room with his best friend so, the bedrooms were, well, two of the bedrooms were a little bit on the smaller side, and mine and Gavin's room were a little bit bigger. Mine being bigger than his, to the point where we, re we had to put a bunk bed in his room. So, this is just a little bit of context as to how the house is situated, more than anything. And so then, when you come from the living room into that split dining room, you walk into through a doorway... And there's the kitchen. Now, the living room also connects into this other similar size room as the dining room. So it's like a double dining room. I just don't understand. Again, I don't know how to explain it any other way than that. There is a doorway, like a kind of a larger doorway, open doorway, mind you, between the two living rooms. Uh, there was really no doors in the downstairs other than the main entrances, the exit, or the back door and the front door. So... There's no other doors. So my mom converted one half of that middle space and into a bedroom just simply by hanging blankets and using room dividers and stuff like that. So then at this point, the dining room gets cut way back and we have a dining, a fairly decent sized dining room table in there, a big chest freezer. And we also have radi they were radiators for heat, so you don't have all like the wall space that you would need to properly set up a room without sticking out a half a foot from the wall wherever these radiators were, and they were always in the worst spots to really set up a room decently. So then when you know, and the kitchen was small too. I mean, there was really you we had a small table in there. And there was really only room to walk around there. So you get more than one person in that kitchen and it was just like you felt crowded or rushed. And let alone trying to cook with more than one person in there. And that was just ridiculous. Um, so there's really no privacy 
as it was at this point. Well, then my brother comes to stay, and my mom had this small little lounger, like a chaise lounge. I, I think that's how you say it. Chaise lounge. And that's kind of what my brother started sleeping on. And I'm being very over-detailed about this to try to give you the best picture possible. And so... Um, he was kind of sleeping on that, and then my mom loves room dividers, like those foldable ones. And so she had put one of those up to give him a little privacy, and then twin-size bed to sleep on in there. Thus making that a bedroom now two, so instead of having a dining room, now we have a little tiny... Half of that was given to him to sleep in with kind of curtains draped around it and a room divider to give him as much privacy as possible. <sighs> Are you exhausted yet? Because I am just explaining it. And I promise you this is going somewhere. Um, and so then there goes that. So now we have eight people living in a four-bedroom house. And, <laughs> I mean, there's a basement in it, but it's not really a livable basement. It's really enough room in there for a small amount of storage and a washer dryer. And that's it. Because the furnace is down there, the water heater's down there. So there's no space really to be had down there either. To like, you couldn't even like make it into another room. And so... The reason that this becomes kind of important, besides the fact that it's no longer a home, it really never was. It was supposed to be a temporary spot to live anyway, because this place had no yard. There were, there's this apartment building about a block down, maybe a block and a half down, that was just full of sex offenders. And having three young children at the time that I moved in, obviously they couldn't really... Oh, that one went flying. Not getting that one back. Couldn't really let them go run around the neighborhood by themselves or anything like that. There's not a park nearby or anything like that. So everywhere we went, we needed to kind of travel. Again, no yard to really speak of. To like go outside and kind of get your own little privacy or escape. It was a driveway and a yard that was shared by an apart, like two duplex apartments. And then a corner of another duplex apartment. So literally seven people, seven different homes, housing units, I guess is more accurate, were expected to share that. So there's no remote side for privacy either. Now, before my brother came to live, I would just film in the living room when my mom went to sleep. Even though that wasn't always ideal because she would snore. So, and this is in the midst of all this other stuff going on with this event and... All this other stuff. So, when I was recording at night, I no longer could because I just wasn't comfortable, like, doing my thing in front of my brother and my mom. And then all the, you know, everybody coming downstairs and the stairs were loud. And so then I start filming upstairs, but then I was, really, the black table that I filmed on, I had that space, that amount of space. And then standing room behind it, I, it was sometimes I could sit if I moved enough stuff out of the way, but really there was no room for me to like stand, like film in my room too. So it really just got uncomfortable. So I had the stress of all of that going on. Um, I was my my living room was becoming overrun uh, as like storage and all this stuff so like and again I wasn't comfortable filming down there anyway so that was just out of the question um and I I didn't mind I don't mind filming in front of like my kids or my husband or anything because they're all very supportive of my channel uh, my mom doesn't really have an opinion of it I don't know what my brother thinks of it I guess I never asked but nonetheless I it took me a while to even record when my mom was in the same in the house so, it really wasn't, it was never going to be comfortable 
filming in front of yet another person. And then I'd have to pause every time somebody would come down the stairs because they were so loud and creaky. So, yeah. And then all along, you know, my husband's kind of stressed out because our entire relationship, we had lived with my mom at that point. So we never really had time or space as a couple to be together. Never had time and space as a family to do things together. All of it was becoming overwhelming. And any normal person would crack under this kind of pressure. You know, not really having any other options. Moving wasn't an option at that point because everybody, you know, we can't just leave and put my mom and my brother in a bad situation if they're not ready to move. So eventually a plan was formulated where we were all going to move. You know, my mom had a plan to move out of town. I was initially planning to move out of this town and move to a different town. And so a lot of things started coming up in the air. I, I was under the impression that she would be moving. Ultimately, we ended up moving and she ended up staying in that house with my brother as most apartments ended up being more expensive than the four-bedroom house. <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of getting off topic. Um. So yes, I have all this stuff going on. I have and my, my daughter's own mental health issues I'm dealing with. Um, my kids were homeschooled and online schooled at the time. So a lot of time had to be dedicated to that. When he was kind of settled in, into his homework and she was settled into her homework, then I could film. But on top of that, we also had a plethora of appointments to deal with. And now, again... <laughs> I can hear my cat meowing. Maybe you can hear him too. He never meows and he's got the tiniest, smallest, cutest meow ever. Um, and so some things that I've never really talked about on my channel, like you guys know if you've been with me from the beginning, that I have quite a bit of anxiety. I suffer from depression. I have ex OCD. It can be extreme at times. Um... Typically what happens with me and my mental health is I shut down. So when things get chaotic or stressful, if I can't do my coping mechanisms of or super organizing, super cleaning, because that's what my OCD tends to um, take the form of is organizing and cleaning, then I tend to just shut down. And that's exactly what happened. I just shut down. And so then the impact of everything going wrong with the event and the company and the channels I thought were my friends that turned out not to be, in my opinion, very good people, just kind of, I shut down. I kind of, it was like, you know, I may have used the guise of, yes, I want to do more crafts on my channel. But I think ultimately what it was, was I just wanted to distance myself from the community. Even though I was meeting far more good people than bad people. I Honestly, other than that experience, everybody that I've spoke to in this community, anybody that I've watched. I mean, there's a couple that are kind of bad seeds, but I didn't never talk to them on a personal level. So they never affected me in the way that this other thing did. So... Instead of focusing on the people that are good in this community and you guys that are supportive and good, I focused on the super negative and super bad. And that was as kind of part of the coping mechanism as well. And typically, um, and this is another thing you guys don't know, is that I am in recovery. I have been sober for... A little over three years now and I do have a story that goes along with this with that we do not have time in this video I don't think to go over that story it's gonna need a whole video in itself if you are interested in my recovery story I will share it it's not a topic that's often talked about in this community so if it's not something that you guys are interested in I will not feel bad because I get it um, it's not something I was entirely comfortable 
speaking on, even after I got clean and sober for a long, long time, because some people just don't want to hear it. They don't believe in it as being a disease or thinking that it makes you a weaker person because of it. I am not one of those people. I have never been one of those people, but I even in treatment, I was around people like that. So I get it. I get that there's a whole subset of people that that's just not interesting. But that was also kind of a way of coping in the past. And when and this was probably with this um big event and this company and these channels that was probably the most stressful thing I have dealt with in at that time the two years of sobriety that I had uh, hands down uh, getting sober was hard but it wasn't near as stressful I mean during the time it was but in in between that after that I hadn't re really come across anything that was as triggering as that. And again, it led to me just shutting down. Even bled a little bit into my personal life. More on my channel. And like I said, while I used that as a guise. You know, oh, well, we're going to get more into crafting. I did always intend for this to be a crafting slash diamond painting channel. I was just heavily into the diamond painting. So I focused a lot more on that. Which was the mistake I made in starting when I started this channel is that I didn't split it up right away. So then when I started wanting to get into that other stuff, it was more of a shock for a lot of you that maybe have subscribed to me simply for the diamond painting aspect. And I get it. I didn't, you know, for the first good part of my channel, that's all I focused on heavily was that. And I, I don't blame anybody when I put out a crafting video and it gets a fraction of the views that my diamond painting videos do get because that's most of the people subscribe to me because of that. It, whereas now I'm starting to get people who subscribe to me because of my crafting and I don't want to leave anybody out. And I am working on that balance. It affected... I did start like a Facebook group. That was the other thing that kind of happened in the mix of that is that I I know I'm not a Facebook person. I know I'm not good about social media. And I had made a comment in a video about the fact that I was going to leave the group that was kind of being the Facebook host of the event. And maybe the way I explained it or... And it could very well be sometimes I can be very dry and what sounds normal and maybe even humorous in my head does not come out of my mouth that way. I'm sure many of you can relate to that. You know, foot and mouth syndrome. That happens to me a lot more often where it sounds really good in my head. I say it out loud and I just sound like a complete a-hole. That's happened to me more times than not. You know, I'm maybe even a little insecure about it. So I'm super hyper aware of it and uh during the mix of this I parent it must have come across as I just didn't want to be a part of any of that it didn't mean I wanted to disconnect from the other hosts of this um Facebook group it didn't mean anything other than I had a channel that I was running I have my own Facebook group that I had been neglecting my own Instagram that I rarely post to and I just didn't I knew myself better and it had maybe I explained it this way originally maybe it went to come across as harsh or hurtful as it may have in hindsight even though it may have come across that way that was still no way that's not a reason to just cut somebody out of the project you're working on. Um, talk badly about them. On I've never said anything bad about anybody on my channel. This is probably the first time. And I don't even think anything badly 
other than I don't think that they're the people are very good people. If it is in fact the way I am seeing things or have seen things, you know, if that's all it was, was that I was just a means to getting new subscribers, um, a way to get more people to join the event, then yes, that does make them not so great people in my, in my, to have in my life. You know, I, when I got sober, I had to cut a lot of people out of my life, lifelong friends out of my life. And so, I guess, to, to me, to make new friends meant a lot. I hadn't done, I hadn't made new friends in years. And so, I don't really have the patience to deal with somebody who would so quickly turn on me because I didn't want to be a part of a group. And that maybe, or maybe they do blame me for the affiliate program. Who knows? And who knows if this company may have told other people if they were so quick to, to blame it on one certain person. To me and to other people. You know, who's to say they didn't do the same thing about me. And I'm sure things were said that I don't know about because something obviously happened for things to go so sideways and for me to be completely cut out of that situation. It took me a long time to get to a place where I could be comfortable talking about it. I was very mad about it and very hurt for a very long time. And to this day, I'm still a little bitter about it. Um, after this video, I won't bring it up again. I won't talk about it again. I just wanted to get it out there because it was the beginning of the end for me and shutting down and not really wanting to give diamond painting the full attention on my channel anymore and I didn't really want to you know I also kind of burned myself out after all of that and I was trying to get three to four videos up a week and lately I've been lucky to get one and it's me because I feel a little lost and I distance myself from the community that helped me get to where I am now which though I'm only at around 3300 subs I'm still very proud of those 3300 but sometimes I do get sad because I even stopped watching videos from other diamond painters you know like people that I fully enjoy watching and that I watched on a daily basis that I would watch their videos the second they came out. My, I'm always, I've always been kind of a silent watcher, whereas I'm not big on commenting, but I was trying because I know how much comments mean to me. So I was trying to make an effort and I just shut all of it down. And so even people that I fully enjoyed watching, like Donnie and um, Jennifer with DP Addiction, uh, <laughs> DP Adventures oh god Jen I'm so sorry I do this all the time with your channel name you know who you are you run you help me run my Facebook group and honestly if it hadn't been for her my Facebook group would have been done a long time ago she's been accepting new friend requests or member requests to join that group she's been you know keeping up with posts and she's really been doing a great job and honestly if it were up to me, I would just change the name of my Facebook group to be a duo group, kind of like Miss Crochet and Coffee and Rachel the do. I think they run one together. I would just do that with Jennifer, but I know that she's found a home within some other groups, so I would never put that pressure on her. Jen, if you're watching and you want that, you just let me know, because without hesitation, I will change the name of that group to include both of our names because you've really been the one to maintain it. But that's just, again, that's part of my psyche, my mental health, when I feel threatened or challenged or ostracized from a community that I feel like I helped grow in a small way. Because I really do feel like I was there when diamond painting really started taking off and I still love this community. It is one of the kindest communities, even with the bad things that have happened, that I have been a part of. You know, I'm a, I watch a lot of different videos and a lot of different genres, and those comment sections are just malicious. 
but I've never really seen that in this community. So why I didn't embrace that more than shut down because of a bad event and a couple of people who treated me like crap, I don't know. I'll never understand that and I'll never be able to explain it. All I'll ever really be able to do is apologize to you guys, the ones that have stuck with me from the very beginning and still watch my craft channel or my crafting videos, even if inside you're really hoping that it'll maybe finally be a diamond painting video, you know, and even those of you who have come back to watch this that maybe don't watch my crafting videos, that's fine. I can accept that. I know, I knew that when I started putting out the crafting ones that I would have a lot more work to do to get my foot in the door in that community, especially since I didn't have the space or capability to do much other than buy pre-made kits and kind of do those and review those. Like, now that I got the space, you better believe the quality of those types of videos will increase because just wait. The next video coming out after this one is going to be the updated tour of my... Because I think I showed a very quick overview if you watched my house tour video. I showed my craft room in just like quickly as part of the tour. But I actually filmed the before part of... Before I set up this crafting area. And I'm going to be filming the after probably tomorrow when my voice recovers a little bit from this video. Oh, see, a little hiccup, sorry. And you'll see that now I'll have that space. But now I also have the space to do my giant 80 by 60, 50 color diamond painting. That's been sitting in my closet for months. Almost, I think, a little over a year, honestly. Um, and I know it got a little heavy there. I knew... Diving into that topic could go really well for me or really badly. I knew there was not going to be any in between. And it, I'm going to switch colors finally. And if, you know, this video, you're just like, wow, that was in poor taste. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm most likely going to lose you. But I'm not going to... I apologize for that, but I'm not going to apologize for how I feel anymore. You know, I... Kept it in for a very long time. My husband is a very different kind of person when it comes to stuff like that. If you cross him, and that sounds very, like, evil and, like, kind of cartoony, I guess. But, you know, he's, he's easy to cut you out. He doesn't have attachments in the way that I do. He doesn't form attachments in the way that I do. But I tend to, if I make a friend, I tend to hold on and attach to them very quickly. And I take it very hard and personal. I mean, all of that even affected my friendship with Donnie. I mean, Donnie, like I said, she's inspired me to start my channel. She's been a very good friend to me. We have bounced ideas off of each other. She has a very successful um, Etsy business now. And I'm even starting one. Not because of her, we just happen to both want to be starting Etsy channels. Mine's just, or Etsy shops. Mine's just not going to be solely diamond painting related. It's actually going to be more crafting stuff that I make. Uh, but she's very successful in her business venture. But I do want to review her products as kind of a fun thing to kind of help me because of because of the way that I shut down and the way I'm just making sure there's no obvious garbage before I put this away. Because of the way I shut down, I have missed out on so much. I've missed out on a lot of new company launches that would have been perfect for my homegrown series. And I was very in the know about that kind of stuff. Like I kept up with new companies and new releases and stuff like that. There's so many new products coming out for making diamond painting easier. And all of that, I just kind of, I, I am so out of the loop now, and I have a lot of catching up to do. Um, and I'm okay with that, too. You know, I, I, makes me a little sad sometimes, and knowing that has made it harder to want to come back 
into the diamond painting community because I just keep saying, who's going to want to watch me? I don't even know all these new companies. I don't even know what the newest products are. And I start putting myself into that mindset, which is very unhealthy to do. Uh, I am tr I am working on that. You have no idea how hard I am working on changing that mindset. If any of you guys know what DVT therapy is, that is a big thing that helps me with that kind of thinking. If you don't know, look it up. I don't want to I don't want to get into all of that kind of stuff on the channel. Not right now anyway. But that kind of has helped me and I wish I would have used it a little bit more when I let things get really hard and when I let things really get to me. I don't, like I said, I'm not, I can't explain it. I'm not going to apologize for how I feel. You can't help how you feel any more than, I don't know. You just, you can't help how you feel. You can control how you react though. And I, I did not react well. Shutting down is not the answer, especially when I've told you all so many times that doing YouTube, as strange as it sounds, has always been a dream of mine since the conception of YouTube. I've always tried to convince people to start a channel with me. And finally, I had the courage to just do it myself. And that took me getting sober to do. And so it was something I was very proud of. And so to let my feelings, and that's the whole point of all those stories, is not to place the blame. But because I, the way I reacted to how somebody else made me feel, whether it was one or two people or whatever, because of a situation, and I let that control what I did with my dream. It, that's just not okay. That Nobody should do that. Nobody should ever let somebody affect them in that way. And I never will again. Um, I will say that it's been a huge learning thing. And if I ever enter into some kind of event, even remotely similar to that, I will have contracts signed. You know, there will be something official maybe even legal because I lost out on income because of that. I gave up videos, you know, like if you look at it as a job, as I do, one that I haven't been doing very good at and I should have been fired from, <laughs> honestly, but you know, instead of putting out my regular videos, I sacrificed those days and that time, my filming time, my filming equipment to do the videos to participate and knowing that I wasn't the only one who participated as little as I did really just irks me and I think the person that was most active in all of that wasn't even someone who was hosting the event but just I will make sure contracts are signed um, things like that uh, if I enter into a collab the details will be fully laid out with equal cooperation amongst all parties, whether it be a big thing or a little thing, before we even go into it. You know, things will be handled on a more professional level as they should have been to begin with. You know, there is nothing wrong with a bigger channel helping smaller channels. And that's kind of what I did when I, I went into it. I had a feeling that I was probably being used, but I also thought it could be fun. But when things started really like, when it became obvious that they didn't, they couldn't care less about me, I should have spoke up for myself. I should have done something then instead of stewing about it and getting upset about it and not sticking up for myself. I should have. I should have said, hey, look, you know, I'm just as much a part of this as you. My ideas are just as good and just as important. Just because I wasn't the one who came up with the initial idea, you still asked me to participate, so I think I should be heard 
And if that can't be done, then we need to part ways. I should have done it immediately and right away as soon as I sensed that things were going sideways. When the whole issue of the money came up, when I sensed and knew, because I have a pretty good intuition about me, when I sensed that I probably wasn't going to get my money, I probably should have been more forceful about that. I should have spoke up and said, well, I know that this is the way you'd like to do it, but this is why I need to do it this way, or I'd like to do it this way. You know, I, I should have, or I should have just not let other people have so much power and control over me. I allowed them, no. I let them do that to me, and I let myself kind of become taken advantage of. I allow that to happen. So it's... If you show your weakness, if you show your hand, you can't expect people not to take advantage and not to use that to their advantage, especially if it helps them. You know, if it gets them further along, if it helps them grow, if it helps them financially, of course they're going to take advantage. If I'm not willing to stand up for myself, then I really can't expect that anybody, and that's just general life, I can't expect that anybody is going to stop and be like, you know what, you know, Brandy worked really hard. We really should make sure she gets her fair share of this. Or when this company started talking badly about me, they should have stood up for me, you know, and said, well, you know, we were encouraged to be honest. And that didn't happen. It, it, I was just a sacrificial lamb. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was the person that they were telling me was at fault. But as far as that situation goes, again, we should have signed contracts about the project I was supposed to do for them. I should have, you know, contacted the other person instead of when I realized that the one had blocked me. It should have been like, well, obviously I can't work with her no more because she's unprofessional and most of you will probably agree with me on that point if you've ever seen the videos. If you know what company I'm talking about, you probably know the person I'm talking about because they were very quick to attack people in comment sections and stuff like that. And... Oh, gosh, I just don't even really know what to say from that because as far as a learning experience goes from with that, I don't know what to say about that. Um, I guess I knew what I was getting into with that situation too, especially after seeing the way certain people were treated, well, especially when I started seeing the favoritism going on. I should have realized, again, it was probably a situation where at the time I was one of the bigger channels, but when channels bigger than me started reviewing their stuff and not being happy, it was like they were very quick to be like, we need to get these people happy and get them to promote our stuff. And now they get stuff all the time. I don't want stuff. I don't want free stuff if it means that I have to lie. And I'm very careful about now when companies reach out to me, the emails are very clear. I have a script, kind of, that I go through, and I'm like, this is what I can give you, and we can talk about me, or want from me, we can discuss that, but it's all in writing, in email form, all parties know what to expect, I, because on the other hand, I have worked with some really great companies, like Realis, amazing company to work with. The company that I just did a video on that came out before this, the unboxing of Victoria's Moon. Amazing company to work with. You know, very um, precise in what they want. And so as tough as it was to go through a company that I thought, you know, that I backed before they even knew who I was, I was a fan of them and praising them, you know, before all of that, you know, now, see, I just, I get off on tangents and I forget where I'm going with one thought, from one thought to the next, but, you know, I was a fan before, and then, so, 
getting that close and personal, especially when it comes to somebody's business, I guess. You know, I, I, I can understand why they may have been upset about that video, but to then be as unprofessional as they were about it is really, in my book, unacceptable. And that's why I will no longer work with them. I probably won't feature their products on my channel unless something changes. If I were to get an apology for the things that they said to the other YouTubers and the other and my subscribers, absolutely. I will, I don't, but I, I guess my whole point is I do not expect anything from anyone. I'm happy to pay my way in this community. I'm happy to buy my own products. I'm happy to do reviews for companies as long as I'm allowed to be 100% honest no matter what. You know, if I have a, if they send me something for review and it's not good, I don't want to have to censor myself or go back and edit it to make it come out more positive for them. If it's not good, I want to have the right to say it's not good. Because from the very beginning, my goal was always to make informed consumers. My first video was a less than positive review of another company that eventually didn't like my honesty and threatened to sue me. So, I mean, if that doesn't say that I'm willing to be honest, I don't know what does, you know. And like I said, you know, maybe I kind of got a little soft when it came to this company, but I was such a supporter of them, you know, and I wanted to allow them certain mistakes as a new company. And I wanted, you know, I wanted to help. I wanted, if there was ways I could help them improve, I wanted to do that. I wanted to be with them as they grew, whether it be me buying my own stuff or, you know, being an affiliate or occasionally sampling and reviewing their new products for them like I see a lot of other people doing. And I'm very happy for those people I am because, you know, it's hard work to run a YouTube channel, you know, let alone trying to, in this community, trying to buy high quality good looking diamond paintings that you can be proud of when you're finished and not stress out because you got crappy materials stuff like that so you know I'm very happy for the people that get sent free stuff from this company and that this company treats them with more respect than I was ever treated with that does make me happy because I'm that kind of person I thrive off of other people's happiness I will sac I will always sacrifice my own for other people's even though it does hurt me at times and even though I just sat and complained this whole time about how I got completely burned from my niceness, to me that was an extreme case. And it came at a time when I was already very vulnerable and very sensitive. You know, and, and because of all of this, and, and I've kind of touched on it a little bit, and because of all of this, because I the way I allowed myself to feel because of other people... In their actions, not necessarily my own, you know, I missed out on a lot. I missed out on opportunities to work with certain companies. Like, um, Jennifer is getting to test out some stuff with Diamond Dots on their customs. And that makes me so happy. I have been, Diamond Dots got me started. So the fact that they're trying to start customs, that is thrilling to me. And I would love to be a part of that. You know, but it's been so long that my channel has suffered. My growth is almost stunted. And people who started long after me have far surpassed me. And they deserve to have done that. You know, they worked hard. I didn't. I slacked off. I shut down. I closed myself off. I took myself out of the community. Um, and along with part of that, you know, when YouTube made a lot of changes to the like creator studio which is where what we use to upload videos and stuff like that it shut off my comment section and it may have done that for other people and you I could have went back in and turned it on but I didn't I never did maybe because I was afraid of what people would say or maybe I just I don't know I honestly a lot of the things that have happened I couldn't even tell you it's not all I'm no way blaming any of it 100% on the story that I told you in the first hour. That was just the beginning of me going through a vulnerable time. Some really crappy things happening. 
me getting taken advantage of in a few different ways, getting pooped on, walked all over, yeah, you know, it took its toll on me, and I did not handle it well. I did not deal well with it, and I, I can't even say that that won't, you know, it wouldn't happen before. Do I, I am I going to try like hell not to let it happen? Of course, but that's not to say that I won't get hurt. I'm just going to do my absolute best not to just shut down and close myself off from the community that has supported me this entire time. And even if it's not been, you know, watching my crafting videos, you know, I've been fully supported through my group, through the crafting videos, even if they only get a couple hundred views versus my diamond painting videos that get, you know, quite a bit more by far. Like, I want to say like triple, quadruple at times of what my craft videos make. But I'm not going to stop making them. That's not the point of all this to say, oh, I'm back with diamond painting and screw all the rest of the stuff that I've been doing. That's not happening because I love it too much. And I think I'm going round and round in circles at this point and repeating myself a lot. And um, I, that that's me. That's just a little bit more about me. So I did say that I would end this video on a more positive note and I do want to keep my word to, on that. Um, uh, starting by, yes, I'm not very good with social media. I, In fact, I suck. You know, I'm not good at keeping up with it. Honestly, if I could, I would hire somebody to just take care of that for me. That can happen right now, obviously. Um, because I wouldn't even know how to begin doing, having somebody do that. Taking care of social media is hard work. Especially for what I'd be able to pay them. But <laughs> I am working toward a goal. I have goals set and in place to start getting more involved in my Facebook group and my Facebook page. That's really taking a hit. I really needed to update that for a heck of a lot longer than my group. Um, my Instagram is... It's not where it should be either. I think I have a makeup Instagram that's got more subscribers than my crafting one. And I haven't posted on that in two years. So, <laughs> and it still is growing faster than my crafting Instagram. So, um, I am working. I'm going to turn my, fig figure out that setting that got triggered when YouTube switched all the settings in their creator studio so that I can actually read the comments as they come in. Um, my goal has always been to respond to comments at least within the first day of a video's release. Uh, I'm trying to do that now. It's sometimes hard and I, uh, I am forgetful. So that's the first little part of good news, better news. Um, and then the second part is, yes, that we did move into a new home. And it has made a lot of parts of life not only a lot more tolerable, but a lot better. The quality of life, like, almost instantly got better. And you'll start seeing that. I'll be able to record whenever I want. Instead of having to work around other people's schedules and sleeping. I do still prefer to record at night. But, you know, now whenever... Because it's just set up. Whenever I want to film, instead of having to ha get my whole setup done, I literally just need to come put my camera into the tripod or the clip that I have right now and just hit record. And then just do it. And then clean up my mess afterwards, you know. Uh, whereas before... I literally had to plan out videos in bulk and mass record. And by the time I get to the end of that little stack of videos, I would be done and exhausted of just merely talking. So hopefully you'll start seeing that change. I'm not going to ask you to believe in it or forgive me until I show that I am doing better. You know, and, uh, and then my work will just speak for itself. 
And again, like I said, I've learned a lot from the things that I talked about in the beginning. And I want to reiterate that I do not blame anyone but myself. These were just things and events that triggered things inside of me that made me react a certain way. Nobody said, you know, I don't know. Nobody made it this way for me. I made it this way for me. I reacted badly to a bad situation, uh, to a few bad situations. So I just wanted to reiterate that, that don't be assuming that I'm talking about any specific person and then go and say, oh my God, Abstract Crafter just totally trashed you in her video because I'm st stating right here. And now, as I did in the beginning, I'm going to actually go over my little checklist of disclaimers. This is just my side, my truth, my feelings. It's the impact of these events and not the events themselves. Um, I felt like I needed to tell you to explain my mindset afterwards and why, why I shut down and why my channel suffered, why my social media accounts su suffered. No one else is to blame, and I am not placing guilt onto them. My feelings about them are mine. I don't expect anybody to have the same feelings as me. Just because I'm disappointed in these channels that I don't think that they're good people. Just because I'm disappointed in this company and I don't think that the person I dealt with was a good person. Doesn't mean I want you to feel that way. You need to form your own opinions based on your own experiences. And that's all I can ask. Um, again, if you know who I'm talking about, whether it be the people, the channels, or the company that I'm talking about, please don't mention them. I am, if I remember, because I do tend to forget, I'm going to put the, the names and channels and the company name into my list of blocked words for this video so that if they're typed in the comment, the comment won't show up. It'll go, it'll get filtered into a folder in which I need to review and then I just won't accept them to be posted. So just keep it to yourself. You can know with confidence if you had any suspicions about anything. I've confirmed them because if you've been around with me for the last year, then you you will know who I'm talking about. You'll know exactly who I'm talking about, the event I'm talking about, and the company I'm talking about. You will know. And it'll just give you more insight into things that I wanted to say and I did not feel like I could. I literally would go to film the video and it would be like this wall would go up and I'd stumble over my words and it just, I just couldn't do it. Or when I initially brought up the idea, I'd get emails of people begging me not to ruin other channels for them. But after some thought, I thought, if my words ruin the channel for you, then you must have already had doubts to begin with. So... Do it, I guess. All I'm asking is to have the same mindset that I am. And if me telling you this makes you feel a certain way about a person, a channel, or this company, then I apologize for that because I'm not trying to influence the way you feel. I just want to tell the story. I mean, I could have went, I guess, a little bit more about the whole mental health aspect, but I felt like... It didn't need that much more explaining. Not as much as, like, the stories that I told that, you know, triggered these feelings did. You know, and maybe if I had talked more about it then, maybe it wouldn't have been handled in the way that I am now. Maybe I would have just been like, oh, well, this channel and this channel and this channel and this company and named them by name. What good would that have done me? I don't know what good this will do me until I start reading your comments. But if it starts getting bad, then this video will come down. That's not the point of this. It's not meant to go be a bashing session. It's meant just to tell you what's happened in the last year. Um, when I was talking about the secrets, that was my addiction, my mental health. I've kind of tiptoed around the fact that I have anxiety and OCD. And they are all clinically diagnosed and are are or have been treated in the past or are being treated now. So it's not, you know, it's just nothing. I've directly came out and been like, I suffer from this. I am medicated for this, you know, which I guess I still don't tell you what I'm medicated for. And I still won't. 
you know, unless you feel like that's something you need to help yourself. But, um, so I guess all I'm asking is just to listen to this video and kind of know more of what happened, where I went, why I felt like I needed to shut down and disappear. There's no excuse for it. It is what it is. But now maybe you'll understand a little better. I am not asking you to, again, reiterating this, I don't want you to go and, excuse me for saying it this way, I don't want you to go bitch anybody out for me. That That's not necessary. It's done, it's over, it's cold tea, honestly. Um, which is why I felt comfortable enough to talk about it. Because I didn't feel like it would be um, something anybody would really care too much about. That maybe it would just be something you could listen to while you diamond paint. Or do your crafting or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and then back to a little bit more of the positive stuff. I want to kind of keep bouncing back to that. Because I guess I'm still a little worried about what people are going to say. But I do want to talk about what some of my other plans are now that I have my own home and kind of how it came to be that we came into this house. So it honestly, this house came by accident. Uh, we were planning, my husband graduated. He was going to school for his bachelor's in accounting and he graduated this spring. And so he was going to start looking for a job. We were thinking outside of the city. We didn't think he'd be able to get a job in this town with um, what he ended up graduating with. And before you uh, get too much into, oh great, here she goes with a big long story. It's not. It's super quick. Honestly, it's just how we came into this house and what my plans are now that I'm here to kind of gauge an idea of other things that you guys might want to see um, in the future. And then we'll wrap this video up. Because it's two hours and it's probably going to be about two hours and 15 minutes once everything's said and done. So, when he graduated, back to that. So we were going to, we thought we'd be moving out of town. Houses where I live are pretty old and this house is actually no exception. Um, we started kind of looking at houses for fun and then my husband kind of got a little bit more serious because we found out that most likely with the companies that he's at now, he has the potential to make pretty decent money. Something that we probably, in, in the future, not right now, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't really, I don't really, this probably be one of the only times I talk about money too. But it's all kind of a, more of a basic life story than, oh my god, look how much money I have. Because trust me, I ain't got no money. This house cost me everything. <laughs> but not in a bad way. So let's just put that right out there too. I had no regrets about being poor as hell once you hear the rest of this story. So um, we kind of started looking a little bit more seriously at houses. But a lot of the houses that were coming up were really small. Not much bigger than what we were at. Uh, three bedrooms, one bathroom. Now, I'm getting old. My bladder's not as good as it once was. I need two bathrooms. Because one of them kits takes an hour long shower. And I have to go to the bathroom. There is no hope for me and we'll leave it at that. So I needed a second bathroom. That was a must. So then we started thinking, okay, well, why don't we put together a list? Even if it's super unrealistic. Of things that are a must. And I got 5% battery so this has got to be quick. Things that are a must. And we put this list together. We contacted the realtor. Told her that we were. We wanted to find a house. But this is what we wanted. And unless something came up with this criteria. We couldn't. You know we weren't going to be taking the houses. You know and things were like four bedrooms minimum. A full basement. So many yardage in our yard. For the kids and the dog to be able to run around in. It needed to have. Something like a den or an office. Something I could turn into a craft room. Um, or a filming room. We needed a garage and two bathrooms. It had to, it couldn't, didn't have to be a full bathroom. But it needed to have a toilet and a sink. 
and all of a sudden this house came up in our price range no less and we came and looked at it and it hit way more boxes than we expected full basement that can be finished at some point partially remodeled a few years back but it ended up having five total bedrooms well one of them's a rec room that we turned into a bedroom but it's got a workbench in the basement where I have my craft area and I film full garage, two stall garage. Well, it's a big door, but it could hold two cars um, and much, much more. If you saw the host tour, you know you've seen it. So long end of it. Here we are. We're in the house. I have a nice little area where I can garden so that's some, a possibility of vlogs that I can add to my channel. Otherwise, I can do a whole separate channel of vlogging my life as a new homeowner, first-time homeowner, uh, gardener. I love gardening. I In my old house before I lived in the crappy house I described to you earlier, I had a beautiful vegetable garden. I had multiple tiny flower gardens, and now I got so much more space to do that. And my thumb has been getting awful green in the last seven years of living in the other house where I had no garden space. So there's that. Um, all my craft supplies are able to be out, though I'm missing a few things that I need for storage right now, but they're all out. And you'll see that in the next video of the tour of the, the detailed tour of the craft area. And so things will be more accessible, easier for me to film. A lot of my ideas that I have, I'll be able to do not just boxed stuff, kits that are already made. So there's that, and I realized I stopped putting drills down because I got really excited. But I think that's where we're going to leave it on that happy note because all of the negative that I just got off my chest in the last two hours, I am putting that behind me now. It is going into the file of do not return to, do not revisit. It is done. It is over. This was the last thing I wanted to do to get it out of my life and off my chest. And there it is. You guys know it now. I feel like I have done my duty in a way of explaining what happened. And let's not let it happen again, shall we? Call me out on it. If I start being taking long breaks, ask me what's going on. Tell me to get back on track. Yell at me if you have to. Tell me this is your dream. Get to live in it anything just hold me accountable because I don't want this gap to happen again I am happier now in my life than I have been in years probably ever in life other than the days that my children were born and the day I got married to my awesome husband my best friend so other than those four days which were just, you know, days, obviously. This is the happiest I have been in my life, and I'm probably ever. And I don't want it to pass, and I want to keep doing videos. I want to get back on track. And I feel like I'm in a good place to just go, go, go. You have ideas of things you want to see? I can probably provide that. So start putting those ideas in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this video. Mostly the good parts. Let's try to just talk about the good parts. Let's do that. Um, let's try to leave the bad stuff out, if we could. With that, I am going to let you go. My voice is shot. My camera's done. I've talked for over two hours, so yes. Why don't we do that? Um, yes. <laughs> Talon's down here. Yeah. He's over watching me kind of go crazy about the happy stuff so down to two percent battery let's end this before I uh I cut off completely and then I have to refilm this ending and I don't want to do that so with that I will let you go have an awesome day have fun diamond painting have fun crafting have fun doing whatever it is that makes you happy I love you friends and I will see you in the next one Bye.